Puppy, why are you eating from your brother's plate? Do you want to become a vegan? Well, that was a big gulp. Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and that was Puppy. And today, we are answering a surprisingly popular question that I've been asked and that I've seen Googled plenty of times, and that is, can cats be vegan? The answer is absolutely not. Well, that might have been my, my fastest, easiest video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, hello. I just realized that a lot of you may be new here and so may need some more elaboration to why a vegan diet is absolutely not appropriate for your feline fur baby. First of all, if you are new here, welcome. We put out a video every week and it's often about kitty care and tips when it comes to taking care of your house lion, mostly about feline nutrition and especially raw cat food, but also things for humans, which can include workouts and nutrition, recipes, stress management tips, and a whole lot more. So if you want to join the Cat Lady Fitness family, then feel free to click that subscribe button below here on YouTube. And if you're watching this on Facebook, just follow our page, Cat Lady Fitness, because we do put out a new video in both places every cat or day, and usually something sprinkled in throughout the week. Secondly, I dressed very appropriately for the subject of today's video. If you can't see, it says, I may not be a meat eater, but my cat sure is. And that very appropriately sets us up for today's subject at hand, which is, again, can cats be vegan? So again, the quick answer is no, cats cannot be vegan. But that's, you know, getting technical about it to be vegan means that you are practicing veganism, which is an actual lifestyle that involves ethical and moral aspects that cats are cognitively incapable of encompassing. Veganism, by definition, is the belief or conviction that killing or exploiting animals in any area of life is fundamentally wrong. Needless to say, this means that cats can never be truly vegan because they inherently, as obligate carnivores, live their life surviving by killing other animals. But that is not what people actually mean when they are asking, can my cat be vegan or can cats be vegan? What they mean is, can my cat eat a vegan diet? And guess what? The answer is still no. You should not feed your cat a vegan diet. You technically can try, but in doing so, all you're doing is dishonoring your cat's instincts as a species and being pretty irresponsible as a pet guardian or pet owner because whatever your reasons may be for, for wanting to feed your cat a vegan diet, I can only assume that it's because you eat a vegan diet or you are vegan yourself and you want to somehow push your dietary and lifestyle preferences to a totally different species that is not adapted or meant to eat that way whatsoever. We can look at their ancestors and related species and wild cats, so lions and tigers and jaguars and leopards, and see that these cats in the wild are obligate carnivores. And in reality, you don't even have to look that far. We can simply observe feral cats that are outside in the neighborhoods that are exactly the same biologically as the furry feline baby that you have in your home. Just because a cat has been domesticated and leads a very bougie life like Puppy and Alfred do, for example, or like I'm sure a lot of your little fur children do, that does not mean that we can dismiss their actual biology and what they're meant to eat. Cats are predators. They aren't grazers like cows or horses or sheep. They are hunters. They catch, they kill. And that is how they get their prey and their nutrition. Now that may be a behavioral aspect of cats that proves they are obligate carnivores, 
but we can also look at how they have actually adapted and how they are structurally built as creatures. Your cat has a specialized dental structure and jaw that is meant to rip and tear meat off of the bone of their prey. Just looking at the shape and sharpness of their teeth confirms that they are meant to act as scissors, basically, that cut and tear into the flesh of other animals. Your cat's tongue, as I'm sure you've felt before while he or she tried to groom you, is covered in these little backward hooks called papillae, and these are meant to scrape and rip flesh again from the bone of other animals when they're eating them. Your cat has very sharp claws that are retractable, meaning that they can put them back in their paw pads when they need to be silent in order to stalk their prey. And their claws on their front paws are typically sharper than their back paws, making it easier to capture and kill their prey. Your cat's vision and eyes are inherent of a hunter. They have a much greater range of the peripheral vision, which is out to the sides, and their vision is more sensitive in low light, which aligns with their inherent preference of hunting and being more active at dusk and at dawn. A lot of people don't know that cats have very poor vision close up, but that is where their whiskers come into play. Whiskers are actually a sensory tool that your cat has and they attach to nerve endings in tissue. So not only do they help your cat navigate in the dark because they actually can't see in the dark like a lot of people think, but the whiskers that are on the back of your cat's legs, if you've ever noticed, those help your cat to capture and kill their prey. And I'll probably make another video about this in the future because I don't think I have, but you guys should never, ever, ever cut your cat's whiskers. It's almost like cutting off their fingers in a way. And yes, many of these physical aspects and parts of your cat's body are also meant for it to be able to protect itself against predators, but they also align anatomically with species that are obligate carnivores. So not only are cats built to be carnivores and inherently meant to eat meat, but they actually have to get certain nutrients from animal proteins specifically in order to survive and thrive. Some of these nutrients include taurine, which I have a three-part series on the importance of taurine. If you're interested in that or learning about anything else having to do with kitty stuff or nutrition or just simply educating yourself more, make sure to go check out my cat stuff playlist here on YouTube, or you can find it on catladyfitness.com slash videos. But taurine is a super important nutrient for cats, as well as vitamins like A, D, B vitamins, additional amino acids, arachidonic acid. Plus, cats don't produce the same digestive enzymes as other species. For example, cats do not produce amylase, which is an enzyme, a digestive enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates in the mouth. Plus, cats have a limited ability to regulate catabolic enzymes in amino acids. This means that amino acids or protein is constantly being destroyed and not absorbed in the cat's body. And this is why cats require a higher proportion of protein in their diet compared to other species. And to align with that even further physiologically or biologically, your cat and all cats have a highly acidic digestive system, which is necessary for the efficient breakdown of protein. And speaking of the digestive system, the length of a cat's digestive tract is very, very short when compared to other species. In turn, this allows them to be lighter in order to remain active predators. Plus, it acts in their favor in terms of a potential bacterial or parasite infection. Having that shorter digestive tract, which is incredibly acidic, means they are less likely to get an infection and more likely to be able to fight it off within their system. Cats are obligate carnivores, and they are meant to survive and thrive from a species-appropriate diet, which is a high animal protein, grain-free, and moisture-rich diet, which ideally can be the raw cat food diet. And if you are new to this channel, and if you haven't even heard of raw cat food before, then I highly suggest going to check out the Cat Stuff playlist, like I said, or catladyfitness.com, where I have a homemade raw cat food recipe, as well as tons and tons of resources 
and information and videos answering the most common questions. And the book will be out soon. So definitely stay tuned to find out when that's going to be released. And the thing is, if you can't come to terms with the fact that your cat needs to eat this way and is meant to eat this way for whatever reason, then there are plenty of furry and not so furry but adorable animals needing a home and needing to be rescued that are herbivores. You can provide a wonderful life for rabbits or a guinea pig or even an alpaca. I mean, who wouldn't want one of those? There are all kinds of types of birds who are really smart and needing to be rescued or adopted. You can get yourself a goat if you have the space because they're adorable and there's tons of goat rescues out there or little baby goats that need adopting. If you really want to commit like half of your life or more to a creature that needs it, then you can go get a tortoise and have fun feeding your tortoise grapes and stuff and no meat at all. The takeaway that I want you to really gain from this video is that no matter how good your intentions are for yourself, your own preferences, whether they're dietary preferences, lifestyle preferences, when you are going to make the commitment to adopt and take care of a creature of another species, it's also important that you're able to honor their needs, and that includes the diet that they are meant to eat. As amazing as it is to be the parent to a little house lion, which I can totally understand why you would desperately want to be, if you aren't prepared to honor their instincts and provide them the food that they need to survive, it would definitely be an injustice to that cat, and you are better off getting an alpaca or a goat. Please click that thumbs up below if you found this video interesting or helpful or if it made you more curious to learn about the proper diet for our feline fur babies. Oh, I almost forgot to give the meow out of the week with such an intense subject matter today. So it goes to two people again this week and those two people are Will Dwyer and Missy Slaughter. Thank you both for telling me your favorite part of last week's video and for always being so engaging and leaving comments on all the videos and liking them and for being a part of the Cat Lady Fitness family. And for anybody else, if you're still here watching, first of all, you're awesome. And secondly, if you want to be the meow out of the week in next week's video, then all you have to do is like this video and tell me your favorite part about it in the comments below. All right, guys, with all that said, thank you so much for watching. Remember to click that subscribe button, become a part of the Cat Lady Fitness fam, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.